Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another incredibly old design that was released back in 2016, and it's called the Elm Bar, which I'm hopefully saying correctly, but this lovely thing sitting right next to me. So this is another hover-like vehicle that uses wheels on their side to glide around on the surface, allowing you to spin a full 360 on the spot in order to aim those Gatling guns at your enemies. That's one of the biggest advantages compared to a traditional vehicle, is that you can just spin around moving in one direction without slowing down at all, which makes it an incredibly powerful tool when it comes to combat. But anyway, this thing here uses three wheels, which does make it a little bit unstable on, well, hilly terrain. It's got two Gatling guns for a bit of defense, and well, we've got some atmospheric thrusters to boost it around, a light at the front, and a fighter cockpit to drive it around. Let's go press F10, find it in the spawn menu, and we'll go from here. So this thing is 463 small blocks, using no DLC packs and no mods. We've got a small bit of information fans such as it's survival ready, it's got an ore detector on there, and it's got a cargo crate for you to store a few bits and bobs inside. And it was inspired by another design, a BSE design, which is a very popular series on the Steam Workshop. So go give this thing a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, we'll have a quick look around the outside, then a quick look at the internals, because I do have that mod still enabled in this world, so we can have a flash of that, see how it's all connected up behind all these steel blocks. They'll go and drive around for a bit, see how it handles, and I think that'll be that. I won't put it into combat, because it will be a sitting duck against a space pirate outpost. So, and the very front for the Aeon Bar. This is what we get, and that's a spotlight to light up the darkness with two Gatling guns right below there to blast your enemies with. Above it, we've got a fire to cockpit to drive this thing around, and that's all being surrounded by some lovely whitish, sort of brownish colored blocks with some black here and there. Moving around onto the side, this is all going to be able to see. A couple atmospheric thrusters to move this thing around, make sure you can go at high speeds, and of course to help allow the wheels to function as they do. There we are on the side, we see a lovely strut coming all the way across to our back wheels, in order to make sure it's nice and balanced while driving around on a semi-flat surface. The round walls are very packed there, this is what we get, so we can see four atmospheric thrusters to boost this around, and that's how our wheels have been set up. Is it very fancy, very snazzy with its overall design, with plenty of places for you to add stuff on if you want to upgrade the vehicle to your own specifications. And we're moving all the way up looking down this thing. There we go, that's all we can see. Again, very fancy, very sleek with its overall design, and could easily be rectified. If you were to say, remove these back parts right here, these back wheels, you could then flesh out the back of this thing with big hydrogen thrusters and use it as a fighter ship if you wanted to. That's entirely up to you. Anyway, down in underneath it, there's our cargo anxious. There's an event stuck in auction from surrounding areas to make sure you don't suffocate in the cockpits, and that's about it for the outside. So what I'm going to do now is grab hold my character, I'm going to come all the way up to it, then what I'm going to do is what I did in my previous video, is press B, what that's going to do is remove all the steel blocks, there we go, and show us the full on interior of what's going on behind all the steel blocks. So we can clearly see our antenna, we can see our ore detector, our thruster, our small reactor, and of course how it's all being connected up with our conveyors, and where it's all going off to. Very handy to see what's going on on the middle, especially if anything's damaged or not connected up properly. Yes, there will be links to that mod in the description below. It is just a super handy thing to have. Anyway, there we go. That's all popped back into place. So once again, with my jetpack on, coming all the way up to this, into the fighter cockpit, first person view, bring up the HUD. These are the only controls we get for this vehicle. With number one being for our Gatling guns to fire them both together, straight forwards. And of course, because this thing is almost like a whole vehicle, we spin this to full 360. There we go. Be able to shoot anything, trying to sneak up behind us. Number six and number seven are very important for these type of vehicles, because this is how we're going to actually keep it in place so it doesn't wander around, and of course it allows us to move around very smoothly on the surfaces without having any kind of accident. So as you can see, if I was to move this forward, we're going to be jittering around a little bit, so just sort of going between 0 and 0 0.1. There we go, it's finally settled down. But if I wanted to make sure it did not wander off by itself at all, I can now put that all the way up to 100%. If I try to move this thing around, it's going to be very, very difficult. But if I was to bring it back to a stop, it's now not going to go anywhere anytime soon even if I was to leave this on a small ramp. You have to put it all the way down to zero. First person view moving forwards, here we go. We now glide along the surface. It's very smooth, very, very different from a traditional land vehicle, which is why I absolutely love these types of designs. If we just glide around here, it's full 360, and we'll get yourself very, very dizzy. But because this is a three-wheeled version, it does become a bit unstable on small mounds like this. If we were to go all the way over to it at fairly high speeds of about 30 meters per second, it's going to get a little bit topsy-turvy and really want to flip over, so you've got to be a little bit careful with this. Make sure you don't randomly flip this over, and we'll damage it and make it inoperable. Anyway, number eight is for your ore detectors. You can go out and about scout for ore patches. Very handy for light scouting vehicles such as this one. 
so we can go and find say, some precious ice, some silver, or whatever we need, report it back to base, if your mining ship can fly over, well, collect it up. Number 9 is if your antenna on and off, just in case you do lose it in the distance, or it wanders off by itself because you did not put the friction all the way up to 100%. And that's about it for the controls. So once again, putting this all the way down to zero, I personally like to have it on five because it does make it a bit more safer to drive around, so it doesn't really go too slidey. And we've got a bit of control over it. It will take a little bit to get going, so we've got to shuffle it around a bit, just in case the front wheel does get stuck into the ground. But here we go, just driving around very carefully now at about 30 meters per second. Don't want to go too fast because that is where the problems happen with these types of vehicles. Unless, of course, you've got multiple wheels on the ground. Having about six wheels where the actual main body of the ship is very high up off the ground can go up to about 100 meters per second. But for vehicles close to the ground, for vehicles with very few wheels such as this one, you want to be very careful when moving this thing around on any old surfaces. Anyway, first person view just spinning around, boosting forwards. There we go. We can almost stop on the spot, which is fantastic stuff. And of course, like I said before, we now just spin this around, shoot anything trying to sneak up behind us. And that's about it. So yes, as for that, that's pretty much it for this video and all it has to offer. It's just a very snazzy ship that I've been meaning to showcase on for quite some time now. And I think I'm just going to hold forwards and ride this to destruction. Here we go, we're now just flying around here. Going to put that down to zero. And this is going to get very, very dangerous. We're up to 50 meters per second. It doesn't seem to be struggling to get above that. Oop, and there we go. We got up to 70 meters per second over a jump. We damaged the front. Although, have we damaged the front? Looking at it like so, it looks like we just destroyed some of the steel blocks. Cancel dancing around. Cancel fire our guns. Cancel stomp. And well, off we go one more time. Yes, as I was saying, it's a fantastic little vehicle to use in your world. If you do want to have something that doesn't use wheels in a traditional fashion and has a very sleek look with a bit of defense on there and a bit of utility in the form of an ore detector. So we link to the description below to start and play out yourself. Highly recommend you do, as well as link to the mod I'm currently using that allows you to view the internals of the jib. And I'll be back with another video at some point soon. Bye bye.